Hi everyone, welcome back to Online Classroom Jegu Dio. In this video, we are going to look at the first topic of Chapter 2, that is the energy flow in an ecosystem. Do you know what is the source of energy in all ecosystems? It is actually the sun. Why? Because the green plants will convert the light energy from the sun into chemical energy, in another word, food through photosynthesis and the chemical energy will then be transferred to primary consumers followed by secondary and tertiary consumers in the food chain and food web wait a minute what is all this consumers food chain and food web don't worry Jacob will explain one by one okay be patient well in ecosystem all the organisms can be classified into three main groups that is the producer, consumer, and also decomposer. Let's look at them one by one. The producer are the ones that produces its own food through photosynthesis. So the producers are actually green plants. How about the consumer? Consumer are the ones that eat another organism. Okay, so before we look at different consumer, we have to know that consumer can be classified into three different types: primary consumer, secondary consumer, and tertiary consumer. There's actually higher level up after tertiary consumer. But for now, you will get the concept as you understand what is primary, secondary, and tertiary consumer. Before we look at that, let's have a little bit of revision. Herbivores are the animals that eat only plants, whereas carnivores are organisms that eat animal, and omnivore they eat both. Okay, so what is a primary consumer? Primary consumer eat producers. And they are normally herbivores and also omnivores. Secondary consumer is the next level. So they eat primary consumer. Okay? And they are normally omnivore and carnivore. And tertiary consumer, as you can guess, they eat secondary consumer. And they are mostly carnivore. Okay? How about decomposer? Decomposer are the ones that actually breaks down dead animals and plants into simpler materials or nutrients. And this interaction is actually called saprophytism. Okay? A good example of decomposer will be the mushroom. Another example will be bacteria. Mushroom and bacteria are actually decomposer. So now that we have learned the technical part, we have learned all this terms let's look at an illustration of all of this so here is a green plant as we have learned a green plant is a producer because they can make their own food from photosynthesis okay a green plant say is eaten by a caterpillar and this caterpillar is a consumer and because uh, the caterpillar eat the producer it is a primary consumer and the caterpillar will be eaten by a bird and a bird is actually a secondary consumer because the bird eats the primary consumer and let's say this bird is eaten by a fox and now this fox is categorized as tertiary consumer the caterpillar the bird and the fox that eat another organism Okay, they do not, uh, they do not produce their own food. They cannot go through photosynthesis, so they are consumer. They need to eat another living thing. Whereas for producer, they don't need other living thing. They can make their own food. That is why they are called the producer. And when all those living things die. Their bodies, their dead bodies, will be decomposed by who? By the decomposer. Some example will be the mushroom or the bacteria. So can you understand better now? What is the producer, consumer, and decomposer? And also consumer, they have, dif they have different level. 
the primary, the secondary, and the tertiary. It should be easier to understand now, right? Next, let's look at food chain. What is food chain? Food chain is actually used to show feeding relationships between organism, between the living things. I'll show you an example of food chain. Cabbage is eaten by snail and snail is eaten by bird and a bird is eaten by a fox. So this is a food chain. In this food chain, it shows you the feeding relationship. And this arrow actually means energy flow. So the energy in the cabbage will flow to the snail because the snail eat the cabbage and get some energy. So the energy flow from cabbage to snail. And the energy from the snail will flow to the bird. And the bird, the energy will flow to the fox because fox eats bird. Okay, so the arrow means energy flow. Now, can you identify which one is the producer and consumer? The cabbage is the producer because the cabbage is the green plants. And snail, bird, and fox are all consumer. Where the snail is the primary consumer, the bird is the secondary, and the fox is a tertiary consumer. It should be really easy, right? Okay, how about a food web? A food web actually is formed when we combine a few other food chains. I'll show you an example. This is a food web. Okay, so cabbage is eaten by three other different living things that are the caterpillar, snail, and grasshopper. And all these three living things, the caterpillar, snail, and grasshoppers are eaten by bird. And grasshopper is also eaten by a frog. The bird and the frog is then eaten, are then eaten by a snake. And, one, and the same as the food chain, the arrows here mean energy flow. So just like I said earlier on, food web is uh, formed by the combination of different food chain. So from this food web, can you find the food chain that formed them? Let's look at them one by one. First will be cabbage, caterpillar, bird, and snake. And then cabbage, snail, bird, and snake. Another food chain will be cabbage, grasshopper, bird, and snake. One more, cabbage, grasshopper, frog, and snake. So if you combine all these four food chains, you get a food web here. Okay? So, just like Dekutio has mentioned earlier, the arrow here means the energy flow. Does all the energy in cabbage go to the snail when the snail eat the cabbage? Or when the grasshopper eat the cabbage, does all the energy in the cabbage go to the grasshopper? Actually, the answer is no. Okay, The energy is transferred from one organism to another organism, but it is not transferred as a whole, meaning it, 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 it doesn't go completely to the next organism. Why? Because there will be some energy loss. Okay, The energy in cabbage will transfer to grasshopper. In the meantime, during the process, some energy is lost. Then, when the energy in grasshopper is transferred to, say, the frog, the frog eat the grasshopper, there will be some energy loss as well and some energy transfer to the frog. Where does this energy go to? Well, there can be lost in a different of ways. First will be movement. Most of the organism here, most of the living things here, they move. As you move, you use energy. When you use up the energy, the energy is lost. Respiration. All living things go through respiration. And it can be lost also as heat energy or chemical energy through undigested food or feces, meaning when they poop, they lost energy. So that's how there are some energy loss as the energy flow through the food web or the food chain. Okay? So that's all from Jekutio and this video. I shall see you in the next video. Bye! If you have learned something new from this video, don't forget to like and subscribe.